Andy here coming at you with my DIY budget bathroom makeover. I can't wait to show you how it turned out. Full disclosure, I actually did this project a year ago. So why am I showing you now? Well, I didn't have a YouTube channel a year ago, so I couldn't show it to you then. But I also am like a firm believer that when you're doing DIY stuff and you're gonna advise other people on what they should be doing and trying, it's best that you kind of live in the space for a little bit to see how the materials are going to wear. Things like has the paint on the tile started to chip? Are the floor tiles coming up at the seams? Um, is the contact paper, does it even look good now or is it really gross on the countertop? These are the types of things that you don't know until someone shares what the experience was like installing and then what it's like a year or so in the future. So I can't wait to show you how it turned out. This transformation was very needed and I'm gonna start by showing you the very scary before pictures. Welcome to the 80s, everyone. This bathroom was definitely a testament to the late 80s in terms of its design style. That very dated, beigey, strange tile that was on the backsplash and the tub surround. The countertop that had the wood edge. Oh, I hate countertops with that wood edge. And then, of course, the orangey oak cabinets. They had to go. The color palette in this bathroom was beige and brown, with the exception of the mauve ceiling, of all things. The only thing I could think of that would have possessed someone to paint a ceiling mauve was that there were a few flecks of mauve in the bathroom tiles, and maybe they thought it would make a really amazing accent color, but they were wrong because 30 years later, it looked really, really dated and just sad awful like everything about the space was very depressing and dated so we could not be more excited to just brighten up the space for one just white paint went a long way so that's kind of what we were dealing with in terms of the four so i can't wait to show you the afters okay so enough talking about why we did it when we did it i know you're anxious to see the finished space so now i'm going to go up into the bathroom and give you a complete tour of our new well newly newly a year ago but new to you guys bathroom welcome everyone to my bright and colorful bathroom So we figured a white coat of paint on the doors, the trim, the tile, the ceiling, the walls, everything would probably make the space feel brighter right away. And then we could kind of figure out how we wanted to introduce color and other visual interests in the space. Because the room is primarily white, white walls, white ceiling, white floor, I will get to that in a little bit, we knew we needed at least one statement piece in the room, something that was definitely high impact and a lot of color. So we decided to paint the vanity this beautiful peacock blue from Sherwin-Williams. I had been seeing this color everywhere on Pinterest and bathroom makeovers, even kitchen makeovers, this is a very popular color. And so I knew this was definitely the shade that I wanted in my bathroom and it would give it that life that it was lacking. In addition to painting the cabinets that beautiful peacock blue, we actually decided to change the way that the doors looked on the vanity as well. So we didn't really do anything structural. Uh, we didn't add hardware. The reason is that the actual cabinet doors and drawers um, have like these like, um, what is it called? Like indent 
curve into them so that way you can pull them open easily. So we didn't really need hardware on it. I also kind of like the clean lines of not having hardware, which is kind of another reason why we didn't go with it. And actually a third reason is budget. So I thought that, you know, how it looked, looked really modern and updated enough so we didn't end up adding hardware. Uh, but one thing we did change is that these doors actually, given like the, the date they were installed in the 80s, it was more common to have exposed hinges rather than nowadays, all the hinges and stuff and like the mechanisms for covered doors are actually inside the cupboard and hidden. Gives you that like smooth, clean look. So that's one thing we did change is that we actually bought those closing door mechanisms um, and put them and installed them into the cupboard doors to make the, um, hardware no longer needed. So it definitely made it look a lot more modern. I would say if you have a home with data cabinets that has the hardware on the outside, an easy fix is to actually buy the mechanisms that allow for the door to open and close with the hardware to be hidden inside. So after we rehab the cabinet, we decided to tackle the countertop. Now you may recall this countertop was that like Formica looking countertop with the wood edge looked terrible in the white space and terrible with the cabinet color that we chose. So we knew we had to fix it up. I've seen a lot of tutorials where people use marble looking contact paper as a way to kind of fool the eye and make it look like you put in a marble countertop. And I will say it worked. So I'm definitely pleased with how it turned out. Um, I think it gives it a more elevated look in the space. We also kind of continued the marble to um, the front of our bathtub. I'll show you a picture of that to kind of add some continuity in the space. But for a really inexpensive fix, it looks really, really good. And it made a huge impact on the vanity and this part of the bathroom. So I want to be real with you guys. Installing the contact paper onto the countertop was by far the most maddening and difficult process in this entire bathroom makeover. And if I'm being honest, I'm not 100% sold on how it looks after the installation. Okay, actually, I should clarify. I think the overall look is good. I think you guys on the screen are probably like, it looks fine, Andy. And in, like, in the bathroom, if you're not looking too closely, it actually looks really, really good. But I'm a perfectionist and I can see all the seams and all the places that I had to cut and tweak in order to make it fit. So for me as a perfectionist, it kind of was a nightmare. Now, most of the tutorials that I saw that used contact paper on a countertop, it was typically in bathrooms that didn't have two vanities um, to work around. You know, it was like a powder room bathroom, not a lot of like real estate. Um, in terms of having to cover up. So I think those applications were a little bit easier and that what lulled me into a false sense of confidence because it did not exactly turn out how like I thought. Would I recommend putting contact paper on your countertop even after my nightmare application? And I would say, yes, I would. For the price, which I think I only spent like $30 a roll, I mean, it is pretty high impact and a really great hack for how it ends up turning out. I mean, it really did elevate the space and made a huge difference with the vanity. So I do think it's worth it. It's also wearing surprisingly well after a year. Um, for the most part, um, you know, it's still adhered to the surface. There's a little bit of pull up underneath the countertop because I didn't have enough to go all the way underneath and secure on the bottom. But frankly, it's the underside of the countertop. Nobody is down there looking at it, so it doesn't really matter. And even in the parts where I had trouble seaming it together, um, I was I thought for sure that those parts would come up and stuff would get underneath and get icky, um, but it hasn't. So that was a big surprise to me. I'm just, like I said, not super excited about all the seaming and stuff I had to do. I mean, it started out really great, and then when I got to the sinks, Oh my goodness, it went downhill from there. So I was able to, you know, get it on the counter. It looks, my husband thinks it looks totally fine. But for me being a perfectionist, I didn't love exactly how it turned out, but I still would highly recommend it because you really can't beat the price and the impact that it makes in the space. So the other big impact thing we did in the space was to change the flooring. Now the flooring was this awful brown like tile, um, beigey brown tile. It was really installed poorly. I don't know what they were thinking, 
Um, but so many of the tiles were like raised like this. I mean, it was a nightmare. So uneven. I don't know if there was something wrong with the subfloor or if the person installing it didn't have a level. Um, but yeah, I was very worried that peel and stick tile actually wouldn't work in the space because things were so unlevel and that I would have too many like seams that were supposed to be like, you know, perfectly aligned or like this and like that. But I'm like amazed that it actually works. So if you have a floor situation like mine where the tile is like uneven, it's also like textural because my tile is also like very textural, peel and stick tiles may still work for you. So I ordered the tiles from a company called Wall Pops. They have so many amazing adhesive products, all of which are renter friendly. Actually, so many of the things that I did in this space are actually pretty renter friendly, like the contact paper and the peel and stick tiles for the floor. And I was amazed by their selection. They have so many beautiful colors and patterns. I wanted something that was very simple and understated because I knew I wanted to like explode with color and pattern in the rest of the space. And I didn't want like the floor to compete with the vanity and the artwork and some of the other stuff I wanted and had planned. So I definitely went for a very muted and white flooring pattern with like a little bit of a, like a diamond shape to it. So it kind of felt a little modern, but also a little kind of vintage, which is definitely my style. I'm more, I'm like modern vintage. I know that sounds like totally opposites, but I tell you it works. So I would highly recommend these tiles for sure. They were very reasonable. I think they were a hundred dollars for the box and I have a lot of square footage in this bathroom to cover. And I was amazed that a hundred dollars worth of peel and stick tiles would cover the entire space. Now installing peel and stick tiles actually is not particularly hard, but it is time consuming. It took us, oh gosh, I think because we were doing it in the evenings after our son went to bed, that's why it took us a few days. I mean, if you were, if you had like a whole day of time ahead of you, then you could probably just knock it out in a day, especially if you have a bathroom that's like smaller than mine. Um, but yeah, it's really, really easy. You just peel off the back and you put them down. The tricky part is when you get into areas where there's corners or a toilet, door frames, we had all this stuff. We had weird half walls. We had um, a vanity to work around, a toilet to work around. Actually, our toilet's in a toilet room, so we had different doors to work around. So it was definitely a little bit more complicated in terms of the application rather than a typical like vanity or other bathroom that's just basically a box. Our footprint is really, really unique in the space. We have a pocket doorway to make sure there's clearance under. So it was a little bit more complicated, which is why it took longer. But I will say in terms of high impact and durability, you cannot beat peel and stick tiles. These are still stuck to the floor a year later. They look great. They did not come up at the seams at all. I mean, this room gets, you know, it gets a daily use. So I was really surprised at how well the, the floor has held up over the last year. So now I want to talk about the most fun part of this makeover, which is the styling. All of the bright, colorful accessories that I brought into the space to make it more alive and cheerful. So something totally unconventional that we did in the space was to cover our tub with a piece of plywood. Now I know you're probably thinking, why? Why would you do this, Annie? It's very, very strange. I've never seen it before, but the reason is, our tub in this bathroom is like weirdly shallow, like very shallow. This is not anywhere close to a deep soak tub. This is like up to maybe your low back type of situation. I don't know why they installed such a shallow tub. I'm assuming they made deeper tubs in the 80s, but I guess they were cut corners and put in something very strange here. So the tub itself was totally unusable in terms of the depth, and then also it's at a 90 degree angle. So usually tubs, you know, you want to lay back and relax and soak. No, can in this tub. You're sitting at a right angle and the water's up to your lower back. So we never use it. We have another bathroom in the house that has a nice deep soak tub. So we just use that one instead if we want to bathe, which we don't really like to bathe. I'm more of a shower person, um, if I'm being honest. So this particular space was kind of lost and empty. And when you walk into the bathroom, like the first thing that you see is that awful bathtub situation. So I had the idea, I'm like, wait a minute, if I put a piece of plywood on it, it becomes this awesome surface that can hold all of my plants. 
So now when you walk into the room, the first thing that you see are all of my plants styled on the piece of plywood and it looks so much more purposeful and impactful compared to a dated hideous tub that we weren't gonna use. So I actually have a few pottery moments in the space. So another one is in my little nook by my shower. Now this area was kind of a dead zone and surprisingly big. So I knew I needed to add some sort of like statement piece there. So I chose a bamboo rattan type of piece of furniture. I actually got this for $10 at a rummage sale years ago before there was like a run on rattan and bamboo furniture. So hooray for me that it ended up working out a few years down the line. I was able to like resurrect it out of the garage and use it in the space. It also has a really nice wood tone to it, which helps kind of tie into the wood tone accents in the rest of the room. So the art, which I'll talk about in a minute, um, is framed in like a light kind of blonde wood that matches the wood tone of this piece of furniture. And then I also have wood tone in my light fixture, which I'll talk about in a little bit too. So it's kind of nice to kind of have these moments that tie together because as that continuity, sorry, continuity and flow in the space. So more styling in that nook of the bathroom, I decided to put one of the wall hangings that I did years ago when kind of like weaving and wall hangings and stuff are starting to gain kind of traction. My husband actually made me a like rudimentary loom and I wove this tapestry. Now it's not perfect, but surprisingly the colors match my bathroom today. So it's kind of funny how things work out. I must be drawn to this peacock color. I didn't even realize until I decided to style this bathroom. And I seem to find things with this peacock tone everywhere. So I knew I didn't want to display this wall hanging just on like a random hook or nail. So I purchased this very cool round light wood tone like knob. And so it just adds to like that wow factor in that space because you have this eye catching wall hanging and then you also have this amazing way of hanging it. So I would definitely like encourage like if you add a wall hanging to your room, why not go a step further and make the way that you hang it interesting as well. So the crowning moment in that space was what we did to hide our very dated shower stall. Now we didn't want to have to do anything to that shower stall. We didn't want to paint it. We didn't want to rehab it. We didn't want anything. We just wanted to hide it. And so we decided to go with a shower curtain. So I found this beautiful print on Society6. I highly recommend you check it out. If you're looking for a shower curtain, they have so many amazing options. They have artists that, you know, commission big huge pieces of art that they can then print on to shower curtains so there's just so much variety so depending on your style i'm sure you're going to end up finding something that you really love i wanted something that was like bright and abstract and the site totally delivered um so i actually love the color palette of my shower curtain and it ties in like the other elements in the room to hang it up we actually went with a wooden dowel now, because the width of our shower stall is actually it's, it's not very wide, uh, we couldn't find a shower curtain that actually went down small enough. I mean, I, you know, there's the telescoping rods that you know you turn and turn and turn and they can become bigger or smaller. Well, it never got small enough, so we had to kind of go the wood dowel route. So luckily at the hardware store, they have huge, giant wooden dowels, so we just bought one of those, cut it down. I found these like bracket things for the each side of the wall on Amazon, I'll link them below, and then voila, it was an amazing, beautiful moment, and it was so easy and reasonable uh, for the budget. So, very excited how it turned out. Now the hooks, <laughs> my husband was like, I can make you hooks. He had some wire in the garage, and so he like made a very rudimentary like metal hooks, but he was so excited to like DIY these so I was just like, okay, sure. I mean, no one's really seen it. So, but in the footage, you may notice these hooks look a little like, you know, rough around the edges and that's why. So I had to like call it out. Sorry, sweetie. Sorry to my husband. I had to call it out because it's not hooks I would have bought, but in the interest of the budget and, you know, reusing and being sustainable, you know, it didn't make sense to buy hooks. So we just decided to DIY them. So, um, so yeah, so that's why we went with those, but yeah, so easy. So all we have to do is like pull the curtain, you know, and then we walk into the shower because there's clearance in terms of like getting in and out with the door and then pull it shut. And it's just like hides this eyesore in the bathroom. So definitely would recommend that. Um, if you have a shower stall and you're like, what am I going to do with it? Put a curtain in front of it. And all of a sudden that thing just disappears. So this bathroom has a lot 
of wall space to fill. So I had to source a bunch of things in order to make this room not look like a big white box. So the first thing that I hung was that woven wall hanging that I put in the shower nook. And then I did like a little gallery wall out of these blonde wood frames that I actually got off of Facebook Marketplace. I will link some Amazon equivalents below. I love blonde wood frames because it's a very modern and bright tone of wood and also tied in with some of the wood tones in the space. For the art in the frames, I kept it super simple and inexpensive. Um, one of the pieces of art is actually a page out of the book. The other is actually a piece of packaging from Anthropology. So years ago, they had this very colorful abstract like gift box that they were giving everyone for the holidays. And I was like, this would make an amazing frame piece of art. So I saved it and lo and behold, you know, years later, I ended up using it in my bathroom. So surprise, you never know what is going to be made out of art, but it was free. So a very cheap way of putting art on your walls. And the other piece that I had framed was actually a watercolor of my dog Piper. A woman on Facebook Marketplace was advertising that she wanted to do like custom watercolors of your pet. And so I was like, you know, why not? I could totally use that on my dog. And so she ended up painting my dog Piper. It turned out really cute and kitschy and goofy. So I knew that was kind of one of the moments I wanted to have in the bathroom because every time I look at this piece of art, it puts a smile on my face. And the other big like wow moment in terms of wall decor is my vintage letters. So I'm not a huge fan of letter art because it's so overdone, especially right now. Everyone has the family and the welcome and I love wine signs all over their house. I can't even over them because I just have seen them so much. I was kind of like very saturated. But then I was on Facebook Marketplace one day and a gal had these like bright sunny yellow letters with black trim that have been taken off a local building and she decided to spell the word hi and I was like, you know what? That is the perfect sweet sunny moment I want in my bathroom. Every time I walk in, it just says hi in these bright sunny colors. So uh, I ended up buying them even though I'm not a huge fan of lettering art, but you know, it, I guess it just depends on the type of lettering art. So yes, yeah, so that was another kind of like interesting moment. I didn't want just like art, like framed art, framed art, framed art, framed art, because that's basically the same type of experience, visual experience in the room. I wanted to break it up. And so I have the gallery wall, it's a very traditional way of styling art. Then I have my letter art, which is kind of fun and whimsical. And then I have like my woven, my woven um, tapestry for kind of like that organic, cool moment. So the one thing in the space that we kept totally untouched and original was the light fixture. Now I had every intention to change this light fixture because it is your classic 80s like bulb light, round bulb light light fixture. It kind of looks like what would be in a dressing room in an old movie. I mean these suckers are hideous and in the before photos in that 80s bathroom it looked terrible and dated. But something miraculous happened. When we painted this entire space white and then rehabbed everything and we kind of left the light fixture last, we realized, OMG, this light fixture actually looks somehow modern and new in this bright space. And that's kind of like the beauty of like vintage pieces. So this light fixture is totally vintage. Um, and in a vintage environment, like in the like original environment, it looked dated because it was tied in with other dated elements. But when you take a vintage piece and put it into a modern space, that piece all of a sudden has a brand new life to it. And that definitely is what happened with our light fixtures. We actually kept it, which no one is more surprised than me, but like the bobble lights actually are on trend probably because 80s stuff is kind of back in style. But a whole room of 80s, not in style, but an 80s inspired or a vintage light fixture from the 80s, definitely totally doable. So really excited that we were able to keep the light fixture, it's saved on the budget. And then also, you know, I like keeping like one item in the space, how it was intentionally supposed to be. So this is that piece. It has like the wood tones that tie into the rest of the space. And then it has like this brass element to it that also ties into some of the brass like fixtures and finishes that we have in the space too. So that's my budget bathroom makeover. Thank you so much for watching. Let me know in the comments below what you think of my new space. So I'm not gonna let you go without telling you how much this bathroom rehab renovation upgrade costs. It is, drum roll please. 
Can you believe it? I was able to do all of this in that small of a budget. So I really hope it inspires you to tackle your day to bathroom too. Thanks again for watching and I can't wait to see you on my next decorating and thrifting video. Take care.